Well, hi there. I'm here today with Gimli, who's one of my European legless lizards, also known as the Scheltopusik, because I want to talk to you about some of the weirdest pet reptiles you can possibly get. The truth is that all reptiles, no matter what reptile you have, it's a little bit of an unconventional pet. They're different, right? When your neighbor finds out that you've got reptiles, they usually have strong feelings about it. Sometimes they're strongly excited about it, and sometimes they're really concerned. You always stand out at the park when you're the person there with a snake or a lizard. Even a turtle, uh, especially if you've got a crocodilian, right? Reptiles are weird pets. That's part of the fun of having one, to be perfectly honest. But some pet reptiles stand out even among the standouts. And we wanted to look at some of those today. As always, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of keeping these super weird reptiles as pets. But I'm also going to add a third category to this video, which is, why is it so strange? So let's begin with Gimli here. This is a Scheltopusik, or European legless lizard. Gimli here is Definitely one of, if not the strangest pet reptile that I have personally. It's definitely the one that makes people do a double take. They go, what? They're actually totally fine with it. They see it and they go, oh, that's a, another snake, right? You have lots of snakes, don't you? It's the moment that they find out that this legless reptile is not a snake that they suddenly go, wait, what? And they become very, very interested in what is a snake and why on earth is this legless lizard not a snake? They're actually very different from snakes. And if you ever hold one, I mean, you'll be able to tell immediately this is nothing like holding a snake. For starters, they're way more rigid than snakes. Uh, they can't bend over on themselves. And then they've just got a lot of attributes that are very lizard-like, but not very snake-like. Like the fact that their tail is super long. Snakes, surprisingly, have really short tails. These guys have really long tails and they could drop all of that, which most snakes can't do. Uh, and they certainly can't drop this much of their total body mass all at once. That's craziness. And they're also pretty much armored. Um, they've got ears. They're not large, but they've got ears, which snakes don't have. They've got a movable eyelid, which snakes don't have. They don't have that kind of uh, awesome jaw morphology that allows snakes to eat such large things. So these guys eat just like any other lizard. They've got a tongue with a slight fork in it, but it's big and fleshy and not not like a snake tongue at all. They're just, well, they're weird. And they're, they're not actually that weird for lizards other than not having any legs, but they're really odd snakes. Mm. And they're not, they're not snakes. And that blows everybody's mind. So I really enjoy having European legless lizards for this reason, not to mention the fact that they're just really cool pets. There are a lot of pros to these guys. I mean, in addition to grabbing people's attention and making them want to learn about this animal, which is a really fun thing, they're also fairly easy to find. You know, you're gonna need to look a little bit, but if you are willing to look online, talk to importers, and I say importers, not breeders, because we've had right next to no success breeding these in captivity. The truth is we, we really just don't know that much about how they breed in the wild. And the fact that they don't breed in captivity is definitely a con. We're, we'll talk about that in a minute. They are relatively handleable. As I understand it, their bite is, it's hard. It's, it's not that their teeth are very sharp, but they bite hard for such a, a relatively small animal. And, and that's something that I watch out for. I mean, I, they definitely, they love food. And so when you open up that enclosure, they're coming at you with mouth open. But if you know to watch out for that, I find that they're not much trouble once you're handling them. Even though they hiss, they're all bark and no bite. They're Pretty darn hardy for an imported reptile. Uh, you know, imports, that's never a great scenario. Not only is it hard on wild populations, but they just tend to come in dehydrated and stressed and full of parasites, and it's just not ideal. But these seem to do pretty well for an imported reptile. Another big pro is that they're pretty easy to feed. I mean, they eat insects like other lizards, and they'll also eat diets like the San Diego Zoo diet. Um, so they're as easy to feed, honestly, as something like a blue tongue skink, and that's great. In fact, they remind me very much of a blue tongue skink. Uh, they're very active and attentive. They're alert. They interact with you a lot, and they're a, they're a species that you can watch all day long. Lots of pros about these guys, but a lot of cons as well. They're completely unavailable captive bred. 
which really for me means you should only get one if you have a legitimate educational purpose for them. Otherwise, it, you know, it's going to be really hard on their population if everybody and their dog wants one. And they are so cool. I'm hoping that in the future they are available captive bred because then you should totally get one. They are capable of dropping this tail. That's always a con for me. I've actually never seen one do it though, so it's not a big, not a big concern. They're squirming! As you can see while I'm holding them, I mean, they're hissing, they're rolling. They're kind of trying to get away from you. They aren't going to claw you up, which is a nice thing. And, and in my experience, they don't tend to bite once you pick them up. But until you get them, uh, they're definitely trying to eat you. Also, their exact care requirements are kind of unknown. I mean, including really basic things like what temperature we should keep them at. And, and this probably has a lot to do with why we've been completely unsuccessful breeding them to this point. We're not getting it quite right. And that's definitely a con. But overall, a very cool lizard, but probably not one I'd recommend for most people. That's going to be the case with most of the things on this list. Next on our list of five of the strangest pet reptiles you could possibly get is the tentacled snake. Now, this is a snake that really shouldn't be handled, so I don't have one here, but check these guys out. They're wild. Why is it so strange? Well, let's start with the fact that it's a snake it's, that lives underwater and has two weird tentacles coming off of the front of its face that it can wiggle around. Uh, that's, a, that's a weird creature. One of the pros of the tentacled snake is obviously that they're strange, right? They're, this is such a weird animal, and it's something that you can keep in an aquarium, which is kind of fun. I mean, that, that is very much different than having a goldfish in your aquarium. In fact, you're going to need to have a lot of fish, but it will eat them. And that is a big pro to these guys as well, is the fact that this is a snake that doesn't need to be fed rodents. In fact, it probably wouldn't know what to do with a rodent, because when is a tentacled snake ever going to run into a rodent in the wild? What they're going to eat are all your fish. And probably not goldfish. Goldfish are not a very good fish to feed to really anything. But uh, this is a fish-eating snake, and that's great. The problem with goldfish as a feeder, because this is going to come up with a whole bunch of things we're going to talk about today, is that they're really high in the enzyme thymonase, which breaks down thymine, which you need. And so when they eat a lot of this, uh, they start to have a not enough thymine, and that can lead to all kinds of problems. So feeding goldfish, I would definitely keep that in moderation and feed other types of fish, even though they're more expensive. There are some definite cons to the tentacled snake as a pet. One of these is that it really shouldn't be handled. I mean, you know, you, you can handle them, like if you're needing to move them out of the enclosure, say while you're cleaning it or something like that. But generally speaking, it's, it's not a snake that should be handled. They also don't move very much, so you can't really handle it, and most of the time it's just holding perfectly still like a stick in the water. They're not available captive bred, so whatever you get is going to be an import, and you get all the problems associated with imports. And they live underwater, which means that you have to keep a fish tank, which is a lot of work, but they'll eat all your fish. So basically what you end up with is a fish tank that has a stick in it that occasionally moves. But when it does move, you discover that it's a crazy snake with tentacles on its face, and that's pretty wild. They're also escape artists. And so that means that you need a tight-fitting lid, which can be difficult when you have all the filtration equipment and things like that going on with a fish tank. Uh, basically, anywhere that that head of that snake can fit through, it's going to be able to fit its whole body through there, and then it might not live very well on land once it gets out. They are, as a potential con, uh, mildly venomous, though it's not something to worry about at all. Not only uh, is it not a very dangerous sort of venom, but if you're not handling them, you don't need to worry about it at all. They're also very difficult to find, which makes it challenging to even get one. Uh, but if you can find one and you're okay with all these cons and you know that they're being responsibly sourced, tentacled snakes, very cool, very weird, and it is something that you could have. Next on our list of five of the strangest pet reptiles you could possibly get is one of my favorite reptiles and animals, period, in the whole wide world, and that is the Mata Mata turtle. Why is the Mata Mata so strange? Well, I mean, let's, let's just start at the front and work our way back, shall we? Uh, its head looks like a leaf with a permanent smile on its face. It's then got a fringy vacuum cleaner neck, 
that leads into the shell of a snapping turtle. It's just the coolest looking animal I can imagine, and it doesn't look like an animal, it looks like uh, some sort of an accident. I love the thing. It's so glorious. Pros. Um, well, I mean, one pro is that as turtles go, they basically don't bask at all, which means that you need to maintain an aquarium, but you don't need like a big lander, you don't need all the basking lights, you just need to keep the water to the right temperature and keep humidity up where they breathe. So it needs a good lid on it, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty much just an aquarium. It's possibly the most unusual and coolest looking turtle on planet Earth. It also, it has this suction feeding with its neck, which is the coolest story I can think of. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should watch our video that we did where we were answering crazy questions because somebody asked me what the coolest thing I thought had ever evolved was, and it's this neck. This neck is it. Uh, so amazing. And they've also got a permanent smile on their face, which pretty much means that anytime you're around it, you will as well, because you can't look at that face and not smile. It's ridiculous. But there are many cons to keeping a Mata Mata Turtle. This is why I don't have a Mata Mata Turtle. They eat a lot of live feeders. Uh, a lot. Like, tons of them. They just suck them down like a vacuum cleaner. Especially fish, but again, I wouldn't recommend goldfish as a feeder for these guys. They're very large. I mean, this is actually a pretty huge water turtle, so their enclosure needs to be big eventually also. They're also surprisingly fragile for a turtle. Uh, I'm not talking about as far as breaking it, I'm talking about as far as it just crashing and dying on you. These are mostly imports that you're going to see, and they don't do well when shipped. Uh, almost all of them are going to come having breathed in some dry or cool air, and then they tend to get respiratory infections and can die very, very quickly. Uh, as I understand it, larger turtles tend to do better than, than babies, and so the bigger your Mata Mata is, the less this seems to be a problem, but it does seem to be a big problem, and I'm not used to turtles crashing and dying all that easily. Usually turtles are tough as nails. Like I said just a moment ago, heat and humidity are very important when shipping them, which it can be really hard to keep heat and humidity appropriate during shipping. And even when you have them in their enclosure, even if the water is the right temperature, but the air is dry and cool above, you can still have these respiratory problems. So you need to keep the entire tank covered and humid and warm. That's really important for these guys. This is definitely a challenging turtle to keep alive, which is not usually the case. Definitely not a pet for beginners. Next on our list, five of the strangest pet reptiles you could possibly get is the elephant trunk snake. Why is it strange? Well, I mean, it's, it's just pretty much a typical snake except for the fact that it lives almost entirely in the water and is wearing the skin of a larger snake. Uh, it kind of looks like Edgar from Men in Black. Its skin just doesn't quite fit right. Fantastic. The pros! Uh, well, I mean, for starters, this looks like a snake lychee hybrid that lives underwater. And if you don't know what I mean, you should check out our video on lychees, because they're weird. This is arguably even weirder. Another pro is that it's a snake that doesn't eat rodents. Um, these guys are going to be fish and frog eaters, which has its own set of challenges, but a lot of people are against feeding rodents to snakes, and just like the tentacled snake, I don't have to feed rodents to this one. There are some serious cons, though. For starters, just like the tentacle snake, they're very difficult to find. Um, also, like a lot of the animals, in fact, all the animals we've talked about to this point, they're not really available captive bred, and wild-caught imports tend to be sick and stressed, potentially dehydrated, though these are probably more likely than most to be transported in water. So, maybe not dehydrated, but certainly it's not the best situation. They live underwater, which again means that you need to keep a fish tank, and that's that's kind of challenging. But again, like the tentacled snake or the Mata Mata, they'll eat all your fish. So you have this big old fish tank, but all it's got in it is this one reptile because it eats all your fish. They also are escape artists, so you're going to need to make sure that enclosure has a really good lid, and they shouldn't be handled, which is a bummer for a snake. Also, uh, going back to what they eat, they're going to eat fish and frogs, and frankly, I would rather feed frozen ra mice and rats to something than frogs. I really like frogs, but and that's nothing against mice or rats, it's just frogs are harder to come by. And fish, uh, again, you shouldn't be feeding them goldfish, so finding appropriate feeder fish can get expensive. 
There are also escape artists, so you're going to need some sort of tight-fitting lid on that aquarium, which is difficult to do, again, with all the filtration equipment and stuff like that. Keeping a snake in a fish tank is just not that easy to do. These guys are also pretty challenging to keep alive, uh, especially alive and healthy. A lot of this has to do with just the fact that they're wild-caught imports for the most part. But their, their care requirements also seem to be fairly specific, and this is definitely, well, pretty much like everything on this list, not something I would recommend for beginners. Last, but definitely not least, is the worm lizard, uh, which is, well, let's just talk about it. Why is it so strange? The truth is, it wouldn't be strange at all, I mean, other than the fact that it was so dry, if you found out that it was a worm. But it turns out it's not a worm. It's a lizard. And that's freaking weird. Oh, and uh, I probably should mention that some species of worm lizards have giant mole feet. So there's that as well. They're, they're weird. I told you they're weird. These guys, like, take the cake for weird. When it comes to pros, uh, they're a very reasonable size. I mean, the enclosure you need for someone is not large because they're, like, this big. They're really little guys. They don't require a lot of space, and the enclosure is fairly simple. They just pretty much need somewhere to dig, and then you'll never see them again. They're fairly easy to feed. They're mostly going to eat things like worms and insects that'll get down into the soil a little bit, because they might not come up to find them. They'll also probably eat some pre-prepared diets, like the San Diego Zoo diet. And there's really, uh, there are a few cons. I mean, one of them is they're really difficult to find, like everything on this list. They're almost unavailable, captive bred like everything on this list. Even if you do manage to get one, even if you got one that was captive bred and you managed to find one and you bought it and you brought it home and you put it into closure, you might not ever see it again, right? Like it's only gonna be when you dig through there to see if it's still alive that you will know that you actually have somewhere in this box of dirt, one of the weirdest pet reptiles you could possibly get. But you would always know that. That would always be there somewhere. Something that makes even my European legless lizard not look like a very weird lizard at all. In conclusion, uh, I, I really don't recommend any of these to newer keepers. Uh, more advanced keepers might have great success with these, but being imports, they're all challenging. Uh, but that might be something to work up towards, because they're, they're real weird. And, you know, when you're coming new to the reptile hobby, no matter what reptile you have, it's going to be pretty weird. But once you become an advanced keeper, your, your run-of-the-mill reptiles aren't going to impress your weirdo reptile friends anymore. These will, because they're weird as all get out. The truth is, though, you know, these, these aren't great pet reptiles. They're just weird pet reptiles. But there are just a whole host of fantastic pet reptiles out there. That's what this channel is all about. And so please... Check out our lists upon lists of awesome, amazing, spectacular pet reptiles because there's probably one out there that's just perfect for you. As always, like and subscribe. Hope you've enjoyed this weird adventure we've been on. We'll keep our eyes peeled for even more strange things to show you in the future, so click that little bell so you get notifications when videos about great pet reptiles and bizarre pet reptiles come out. And we hope to see you real soon. Also, check out our Patreon! also known as the, can you actually scroll down so I can read this word? It was one of my European legless lizards, also known as the Shelopusic. Sheltopusic. Drats! It looks like it had mustaches. Yes, it does. I love it. Like Fu Manchu. <laughs> Indubitably. You wouldn't recommend these, like, at all. Nah. I'm pumped. These are the strangest- Did you bump it? I bumped it. Next on our list! Is well. Oh, sorry. Patreon. Also, check out our Patreon. You scared me. Good. That's perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. They're so weird.